Right then, Manchester United might be about to enter into panic mode. But before we get into panic mode, we are looking at the different strikers that we are currently being linked to as we enter that panic mode. And uh, we've been linked with a 50, um, 50 million euro move for Matthias Cunha from Atletico Madrid. With the uncertainty around Ronaldo's future, Marshall's fitness and consistency concerns, United desperately need a focal point up front. I think there's an archetype of a player coming out, someone that is a physical focal point, but also someone that the team can play off. Um, and Cunha does have talent, uh, but it's not necessarily a transfer or a deal without some worries and some concerns. And here's why. Cunha is very versatile forward. and He can operate anywhere across the front three, and I think that versatility is, by and large, a positive. But it isn't necessarily a huge positive. It also means that he's yet to nail down any sort of fixed position. And the reason that that's a concern is because if you was good in a position, you get played in that position. For Hertha Berlin, he was often utilised as an attacking midfielder, second striker, often in the sort of areas Bruno likes to pick the ball up. Uh, and he was not the out-and-out -out focal point uh, goal-getter up front, certainly that United need. That's why he's seemingly become a lot more used and maybe it's even more natural dropping into pockets to receive rather than that spinning in behind looking for runs in behind kind of striker or or even holding up the ball he's more of a creator of anything else and the similarities between the positions he takes up and where bruno takes them up are eerily similar or they're very very close um I'm not sure there's enough of a difference or enough of a separation in their styles yet, in all honesty. Now, he only has 39 goals in 163 games with 27 assists. And his assist numbers almost mirror his goal stats, give you an indication of the type of player that he is. Um, you know, they're almost Bruno-ish in terms of their makeup. Uh, and, you know, they're, they're not quite Bruno-ish in terms of their number either. In the Bundesliga, as we know, uh, it's football heaven for attackers. It's a place that footballers can go and stat pad because its end-to-end -end style really favours a high-scoring game. But he only has 14 goals in 74 games in the Bundesliga. That's a red flag for me. You saw the numbers that Shinji Kikagawa had before he came and the numbers that Henrik Mkhitaryan had and then the numbers that Jadon Sancho had had coming from the Bundesliga and then what they managed to output in the Premier League following that. It doesn't bode well for him based on those stats. Now, for someone that's also meant to be more creative, his passing data over the year, over, over the past year, really does flatter to deceive. He's in the bottom 10 percentile for key passes per night. He's suggesting that he is not a creator. He only has a pass completion of 73%, which if you're creating chances, I've got no problem with, but you're literally in the bottom 10%, you're not. And he's only averaged 1.7 progressive passes per 90, which is extremely average for a player given that sort of playing style despite being six foot his hold up play is not his main strength and he is poor in the air he only wins 24 percent of his aerial duels and he is in the bottom five percent for aerials lost he's currently coming off a knee injury that had him out for nearly two months earlier in the year and one of the rules of buying players is don't buy players with knee injuries recent knee injuries they need to go and get at least a season of playing with no issues in before you do that so there's, there's very, very, very clear problematic aspects to this transfer. Let, and this isn't even getting into the price. 50 million euros for a third or fourth choice backup forward at Atletico is not sensible money. It really is not. 50 million should be an absolute starter, someone about to hit the next level. We've seen some of those. We've seen United link with some of those in the last couple of weeks. Cunha isn't one of those. Now, he has lots of positives to his game. Uh, he is a pressing monster, and he is a hard worker. But I'm sorry, if you want someone to run about, go and fucking pick up the phone and get Mo Farah. If you want a footballer, someone that's going to be effective, someone that's going to put a ball in the back of the net, someone that's going to create for others, then go buy a footballer. Cunha is too basic of a player. This is a player that you would expect a team that is... This is a signing for Nottingham Forest. Although it's not Nottingham Forest money. This is a player that is not a proven goal scorer, that is not a proven creator, and his numbers don't stack up to either of those things. He might be another option up front, and he might be able to be someone that can lead the line when we've got no possession. 
but I think to be a success at Manchester United, and certainly for the money involved, there has to be a better footballing reason to sign him than he runs around like a puppy in the wind. It is a no from me on Cunha. And I might do a video looking at the positives if this deal looks like it's going to progress. Because like I said, there are some positives, but the negatives, it's a no from me. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.